Aliens. Genocide. Chapter 7. A month of her life, just getting this show on the road, Colonel Alex Kozlowski took a swig of her coffee and watched as the last batch of supplies got loaded into the shuttle. She managed to get down to a quarter capsule a day of fire, but she'd already taken that now and damned herself for wanting more. The stuff wasn't like booze. You didn't see creepy crawlies if you went dry. It was like cigarettes and just as hard to kick. She wanted to kick it to show her own superiority to herself, which was why she felt bad now wanting another hit. In just a few hours, they'd be boosted up to the Razia, stored away with the rest of the stuff Daniel Grant and his scientists wanted on this mission, along, of course, with the rest of the Marines, her own hard ass included. Alex Kozlowski was sitting on the apron of the ramp, the lip of which sighted a wing of the shuttle that would soon trundle out of the hangar and wing up through the atmosphere. To the other side of her was a warehouse-sized security checkpoint and storage room. Dawn had just shouldered through a cloudy horizon. She slouched in a chair, watching the crates being loaded. Hell of a lot of stuff going up there. She'd been in charge of everything her crew was going to need. She'd wanted to be in charge of the whole shebang, Unfortunately, that was not in the cards. A bored-looking delivery man walked over and handed her a piece of paper on a clipboard. Sign, please, Colonel. Alex took the clipboard. Supplies, said the checklist. That was all. How can I check them in if I don't know what they are? Look, Colonel, said the man, I'm just doing my job. I'd like it a lot if you would just take a crowbar and pry open a couple and have yourself a gander. I'm afraid, though, that it's all pretty insulated and locked up and you'd be pretty hard-pressed to lock the stuffing back in. The guy was a civvy, probably worked for the government. Kozlowski could tell by his attitude. She didn't like any man she couldn't give orders to or take orders from and the man annoyed her. What could she do, though? Make him clean the latrines? He was the equivalent of a third-rate, truck-driving, trolley-pushing bureaucrat. It hit her then. What was important to bureaucrats? Oops, she said, and tore the papers she had to sign into shreds. The man looked at her, stunned. Kalnu, I'm going to have to go and get another form now. Why? File a complaint, toad breath, she said. But have some respect next time you give a lady a form to sign. The man went off cursing under his breath. To get another form, of course. Kozlowski went off to sniff around the crates. Top secret, they read. This side up. Highly fragile. One was even fitted with elaborate refrigeration equipment. Oh, well, she said, drumming her fingers against the crate. You can bet I'm going to find out what's going on when we're light years away. She was almost sorry she'd signed up for this gig. Not that she minded going long distance in interstellar space. That would be fun, and the idea of blowing away xenomorphs en masse, still tickled her pink. However, all the mystery and bullshit attendant to her duties had not exactly thrilled her, to say the least. She thought that she was in charge of this mission, but over the weeks, the fact had gradually seeped through her thick skull that she was only in charge of the military aspects. Neil Farm's other operations on Arazia, and there was plenty of extra room for that, which was doubtless why the ugly scow had been chosen, was strictly out of her control, which was one of the reasons they'd probably chosen her. 
She could hear the old uniformed farts now gassing. Kozlowski? Yeah, she's tough. Good. But she's a woman. She's got some give to her. Alex Kozlowski smiled to herself. The preparations were only part of the whole story. She'd taken a shit dish to her, fried it up nice, and put some ketchup on it. When the Neo Farm boys were out there among the stars and planets and Xenos, they had better just hope they'd brought some condiments along the stomach, what they were going to get from her. Yep, this was going to be an R&R trip for her. If it killed them, and her, along with those bugs, it would be nice to get away from the planet where Peter had died. Maybe, just maybe she'd find the kind of peace or war she was looking for. She was just sauntering back for another pour of coffee when a man whirled through the door. At first, she thought it was Mr. Mover, pissed off and running back with that form to sign. However, it was not in a bottom-level bureaucrat at all. It was Daniel Grant. He didn't see her. He ran toward the gangplank of the loading car for the shuttle, looking as though he wanted to climb on along with the baggage. He looked really bad, too. Fancy duds all tattered and torn, shoes scuffed, and fancy haircut all frazzled. Yo, she called out. He swirled around, and the first thing that Kozlowski noticed was how bloodshot his eyes were. How baggy. He looked like a man who hadn't slept much last night, only worse. Look, soldier, tell me where I get on the shuttle. Grant? She went closer, eyeing him suspiciously. What, was it Drug King flying high or something? That's right, soldier. You want to help me out? I'm in charge of this mission. Colonel Kozlowski here, Grant, and the last I heard, you are going to keep your Oxfords firmly hugging ground. Unfortunately, she was a bit too astonished to be properly sarcastic. Oh, yes, Colonel, of course. I'm sorry, it's been a rough evening, he sighed looking back at the access room as though half expecting something to be following him. For a moment, he looked lost and vulnerable and quite a different human being entirely than how she'd seen him before. Something troubled her deeply about him. There was an aspect here that reminded her. Rough evening? But the sun was rising. Uh, yes. He seemed uncharacteristically at a loss for words. He kept on looking behind him. Don't worry, Mr. Grant. Whoever's chasing you can't get through the base of security unless they nuke the perimeter. Chasing? He seemed to shake something off. Nothing of the sort. I just couldn't sleep last night, that's all. Got a little groggy, fell down a couple of times. Shouldn't you see a doctor then? No, no, Colonel. I'll be just fine. Before her eyes, he seemed to be putting himself back together again. An amazing act of will. Somatic repair. Straightening of poise. Sucking in of stomach. Stiffening of upper lip. Psychological repair. The psychic armor erected. The eyes recovered. And the willpower returned. The arrogance. I made a monumental decision last night, Colonel. Did you? Yes. This mission is far too important to my companies. To me. To allow. I mean, not to contribute my presence. I called both the Admiral and the General last night and made arrangements. I'll be going along with you, Colonel Kalowski, to help oversee and participate in the effort. He took in another breath looking stronger by the moment. Are you? Oh, this was just peachy keen. Yes, specific orders are even now being sent over. Now, if you'd kindly drive me to the passenger portion of the shuttle. 
no bags, Mr. Grant? Er, uh, no. The decision was so abrupt. I did not have time to pack. I'll use whatever's on board. However, the Admiral assured me that there are communications facilities available aboard the shuttle that I can use to let my people know what's happening and dub someone to take my place while I'm gone. That's going to be a long time, Mr. Grant. Four months at least. A lot can happen to your company while you're gone. I trust my officers here, just as I trust you and your people on the Razia. I'm not dealing with amateurs in either case. No, of course not, but don't be mistaken, it's going to be plenty dangerous out there. Whatever dangerous was out there did not seem to face Daniel Grant. He seemed far too occupied with whatever he was running away from here. However, there would be plenty of time to find out exactly what that was later. Fine, we'll put you on a shuttle with your boxes and the last group of Marines going up. Excellent, Colonel. I'm looking forward to working with you. He could not seem to help himself looking fervently around. Ah, uh, perhaps you could bring me some of that coffee and one of your military-style donuts. Oh, and an Alka-Seltzer. That would help a lot. Kozlowski stepped forward and poked him in the shoulder. Look, Grant, you're in my territory now. I'm not your slave. She pointed, cringing a bit. God, he smelled of alcohol. There's stuff over there in the office. Get it yourself. Then she stomped off to get on with her work and check on the promised electro dispatches. Only way she was going to allow Grant on a razzia was if she was ordered to do so. This little wrinkle in the future did not bode well.